Don't dig a trap, for you will fall into it yourself. Let me explain what this means in the context of the Ukrainian offensive. The Ukrainian general staff officially reported that since the beginning of the offensive, 193 kilometers have been liberated. 24 kilometers in the Bakhmut direction, the rest in the southern direction. In the British intelligence reported that the AFU for a month were able to liberate more territory than the enemy was able to capture during its six-month campaign. The Ukrainian general staff data is the confirmed and assigned territory for the Ukrainian defense forces and does not take into account the advancement zone or gray zone, which is a significant area. But now the success of the AFU's actions should be counted not in kilometers, although this is undoubtedly important too, but in destroyed enemy reserves. So, according to the latest calculation of analyst Oryx, the ratio of equipment losses from July 1st to July 10th is minus 140 to 71 in favor of the AFU. The losses of the Russians in the defense exceed two times the losses of the Ukrainian side in the offensive. Frontline Trends Earlier I emphasized that it is the destruction of the enemy's reserves and forward line that will be decisive. At the same time, according to OSINT research the AFU has liberated up to 70 square kilometers over the last week, while suffering losses in equipment half as much as the enemy. In the southern direction, the enemy began to move the main strategic reserve, the 35th General Army. Some of the researchers believe that this is the last reserve of Russia in the south, and further will only have to remove from other parts of the front. At the same time, the enemy itself reports that the AFU has not yet put the newly formed army corps into battle. Why have the losses in equipment decreased and the advance increased? It's all about reserves. The enemy forces are not as fresh, and quick operational reserves have already been brought in. There is evidence when the advance of the Ukrainian defense forces was stopped not by the enemy, but by the weather. Also, effective work within the framework of counter-battery warfare, which even a skeptic cannot fail to notice. For every one Ukrainian gun destroyed, there are 20 Russian ones. And the third component, infantry, these are those Ukrainian titans who conduct several operations a day for each dugout or wooded area, withstand artillery fire and pull the enemy reserves to the front line. Combined with all of this, identifying enemy firing positions and equipment allows Ukrainian artillery to inflict a defeat. It is a difficult titanic labor of infantry. And quickly will not be, but the pace must build up with the exhaustion of resources in the enemy. And what countermeasure plan did the enemy hypothetically have in place? According to General Gerasimov's plan, the main reserves of the AFU should be constrained by the parallel and simultaneous advance of the enemy, in the Swataway and Kremina directions and near Avajivka. According to the enemy's plan, this should have drawn reserves from the south, which in turn would not allow the AFU to gain critical weight under the now created conditions of a breakthrough. On those directions it is very difficult now, but the enemy cannot realize its plan and therefore fell into a trap, which he himself was preparing. What should he do with the significant forces concentrated there, but still not enough for a breakthrough, and their transfer to the south is a significant logistical operation. And logistics is the basis of war and time is now a critical factor.